All I knew was two names. Abraham Lincoln, the 16th President of the United States, and John Wicks Booth, his murderer. I'm not sure if I pronounced the name right. And that's the two names that I knew. But in this book, I realized that there was much, much more than that than just a man with a gun. There was a complicated plot, a big man chase, and well, hello, fellow bookquesters. It is I, Aaron the Bookquester, and today I got this great book, Chasing Lincoln's Killer, by James L. Swanson. And well, let's get right on to it. This book basically just shows the setting of when this has happened, well, you know, Lincoln's murder, which is shortly after the Civil War, and where it shows a setting of a patriotic nation who is very, very happy that the Union has won the war against the Confederate soldiers, and so on. And this book basically tells the story of the murder before, you know, the build-up, and then the actual making of the plot and the execution, then running away of John Wick's booth. And basically it shows all that in a narrative fashion, so it's all it's a it's it's easier to absorb basically. So things that I did find out with this book, some interesting facts. Well, that day, Abram while Abram Lincoln's life was taken, Seward's what life was also threatened. See there was an attempt on his life and one of Wick's close friends attacked him, and he was almost killed and his face was permanently disfigured due to a slash in his cheek. The vice president was also going to be targeted, but the man who was John Wick's other accomplice did not have the guts to do it, so he bailed out of the situation. And that's why, and that's a couple things that I found out, and there's more. Um, Lincoln didn't die immediately to the gunshot, gunshot in the head. Instead, his life was preserved for a couple days. And finally, and finally, when he died, he was lying in a close by inn or a little little room, a little dingy room. And there he, well, basically he was lying there, basically unable to speak, just being able to breathe for a, 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 a long amount of time, quite a couple days. And then finally, when he died, well, yeah, he died. So that that's a couple things that I found out. And I also found out a minor fact that everyone probably knows. John Wicks was a very famous author at that time. Like, how did I, I did not know that. Now, things I did notice about the book and what I think. So, I see an effort not to exaggerate any of the facts. In fact, it feels almost like a history lecture, if not for the narrative input. So it feels like it's bordering a narrative and just, just like, um, dishing out little facts like a report, like a normal history book. So I feel like it's more of a, more of a history book turned narrative. It's more like an history book, but it's a little easier to understand because it's a, there's a little bit of a literary narrative elements in it. So that's what it feels like, and I feel like the author implemented just enough to for the story for the narrative to be suspenseful, but no facts were, I don't, I don't feel like a lot of facts were exaggerated, and some of the facts that are not known aren't filled in with theories or, or something of the author's fancy, instead it is just that what happened afterwards is unknown. And that's what I think of the book. There's not much to say because it's just a real life story turned into a narrative, but I definitely feel like Bomb, that other book that I read of this type, was much more suspenseful and much more well written in that narrative fashion because for this I feel like in general there aren't many facts about the Great Manhunt and the Lincoln's Killer really even though there are a lot of facts there isn't enough to spin a complete suspenseful story so I think the author did really well with what he had and I think it's a very interesting book and because of it, I learned a lot of good old history in a reading fashion. So I would recommend it, even if it is, to learn this history in an easier fashion. And like always, your book quester, Aaron the book quester. It is a good book, but now I feel there, 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 there are differences of books of history turned into narratives. Huh. Well, I only read two, to be honest. Like, yeah, bye.